Hey guys, it's Diabetic Girl. Um, okay, so today I wanted to do the blowout of BD's rants. It's so big, I'm gonna have to call it a dire rant. Because, as we all know, you know, it's the... Oh my god, it's August 1st. Whoa. What? Sorry, I, like, haven't looked at a calendar in a while. Anyways, so as we know, at the end of this month, or maybe even a month from now, we're all starting school again. So I figured today... I have all these questions written down. Um, there aren't that many, but we all know I can talk forever about diabetes. So here is the back to school diabetes rant, mainly because, well, I have nothing to do today. So I put on a dress and I called it a day and I said, I'm going to do a diabetes rant. Mm. All right. So first question. Oh, by the way, these questions are questions that like I'll get asked by other people and I'm hoping that they'll help you for this back to school. Yay. And they're not all back to school stuff. Like some of it is about camp and stuff, but that's okay. <laughs> all right. So, question number one: Why pump? Um. Okay. So I took shots for a really, really long time. I think I was eight or nine, maybe. I think it was eight. So, you figure that's about six years of um, shots. And don't get me wrong, shots can be fun. I mean, you don't have to carry around a pump all the time. But for me, it just wasn't my thing. I am a very on-the-go person, which is why a pump works so well for me. I mean, who wants to stop everything and have to give a shot every 10 seconds? Well, you shouldn't be giving shots that often. But still, who wants to stop everything and give a shot? No one! So, that's why I wear a pump. Um, the second question is, why Medtronic? So, I started wearing a Medtronic when I was eight, and, was I eight or nine? I don't know. I was, I think I was eight. Yeah, I was, yes, it was eight. Um, so I was eight when I started wearing a Medtronic, and for me, I just personally think that it's, there's so much, how do I explain this? Okay. So let me start by saying I, I wore a Medtronic. From the time that I was in the fourth grade until I was in the seventh grade. Seventh? Seventh grade. And at that point in time, I had switched to an Animus Ping, which you guys kind of know about, I guess. A little bit, maybe. And, um, so I switched to the Ping, and my problem is, don't get me wrong, I think Animus is a great company. Um, they do a lot. Their pumps are wonderful. But the problem is that when you have a small problem, and there might be a crack in your screen, you automatically have to have a new pump. Well, maybe you guys haven't noticed, but I throw my pump, I drop it, it drops into the toilet. Gross. Um, so, for me, for someone who was always dropping their pump, it just didn't make sense, because every time I turned around, I needed a new pump. And to, when you, like, when they send you a pump, you have to send back your pump, like, within an hour-ish. It's some crazy thing. You have to send it back right away. So you basically have to take the damn thing off. And I'm sorry, but I live way too much for that to go on. It's not even funny. So back to Medtronic. So, um, I wore a ping for just that one, maybe two years? I wore a ping for two years, I think. Yeah. I wore a ping for two years. And... Um, so two years, I did that for two years, and then the summer in between my eighth grade and my freshman year of high school, I actually took a pump break, like, completely off a of pump, and I was off a of pump until about November of my freshman year, and then I went back on a mini-med. I remember it very clearly because I was at marching band practice, and, oh, it was like the third or fourth one, and there was a cute boy in the band, and oh my god, I needed to date him, and I needed to be next to him for block, and I was gonna talk to him whether he liked it or not! And then I had to leave. I was so angry. I was so mad. I remember being wicked mad about it because there was a cute boy in the band and I had to leave. I had to leave to put on a... Mm, I was so mad. I don't know why that always just... I, I was just so mad. I remember being so angry and just seething with anger. And I don't know where the hell my mom was. 
Oh, she went out, she went out to get, run, like, run an error. But I remember the same thing with anger as I'm, like, setting up my rebel. I'm like, you ruined my life! Ugh! Like, seething with anger and excitement because I was going back on a pump. Weird, right? Yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I just like Medtronic because I am a klutz. I drop everything. Who are we kidding? There have been days where I drop my flute on my own foot. That hurts. So I needed a pump that can withstand being dropped or thrown or anything. And I needed a customer service group that would stay behind me, which is what Medtronic did when I was with them before. So that is why I went back to Medtronic after leaving my ping. There was nothing wrong with the ping except for the fact that I felt like it was always broken. I mean, I, I basically got a new pump every month, which... It was kind of annoying. Anyways, next question. Three. Why camp? Okay, well, you guys know, all right, sit, make sure you're sitting down because this is going to be a long spiel. So you guys know that I went to camp 10 years ago um, this summer and from that point in time, it just sort of changed my life. You know, I found a place where people were just like me. They totally understood what I was going through and I had never experienced that in my life. And so it was just special and it was different and it was cool. It was something I wanted to be a part of. And so therefore, you know, I, I've i been camp ever since. And maybe you guys remember it, but a little over a year ago, my first camp counselor, Caitlin, died. And it was since then that I've actually really been sort of urged to go back to camp and sort of repay what she did for me. Because I mean, without her, I wouldn't be on a pump and I wouldn't still be at camp. And those two things have changed my world so, so very much. And so I always feel like I have to pay it forward with camp. And, you know, you really, if you're not going to a camp now, just go. Like, overcome those fears because they are so great. And you will feel like you're not alone, which is really, really important when you have diabetes. You need to have someone who you can connect with. And I guess that's sort of the camp spiel. Wow, that took me less time than I thought it would. Woo! Okay, um... So another question is, how do I embrace having diabetes? Well, okay, you might want to sit down for this one too. Um, okay, so it's really not a matter of how do I embrace it. It's a matter of knowing that it's part of who I am. And, you know, it'll always be a part of me. Whether there's a cure or not, it's always going to be part of me. I mean, I'm a diabetic girl. And maybe that's how I embrace it. By putting myself and my diabetes out there for you guys to know like how I feel and what I want to see happen and I guess that's sort of how I embrace it. I am open about it. I mean, I don't care. You think I'm weird? Whatever. You don't like how I do this stuff? That's fine. But you know what? You have to be open to it to embrace it, if that makes sense. Um, next question. Friends. Okay, so you guys know that I have some very, very loving and supportive friends. I have Bon Quiqui and I have Luther and I have Pump Girl and I have all of them. And finding friends that can accept you for who you are isn't that hard if you can accept yourself and if you can embrace your diabetes. Um, and I mean, honestly, I don't know what I would do without Luther and Bon Quiqui. The two of them are, they're like my rock in a soft place that didn't make any sense but like I literally they mean so much to me and to be able to have a group of friends who I can say oh um you know guys gotta change that site I'm high and they just understand it is it's beyond words for me I'm so very thankful for the friends that I do have um you know it's really really hard especially in high school sometimes when you're trying to find who you are and what you're going to do with your life and like having friends who can support you is so very important. I mean without my friends I wouldn't be here sitting on my bed talking to you guys about diabetes um, and it's just the way it is. Always has been I guess. Um, the next question is what do I think my parents don't understand? So I did a vlog a few <laughs> months ago where I talked about what I didn't think my parents understood and you know it's kind of like well why don't I think this and it's because they don't live the disease they you know they have to for a period of time but 
I mean, I'm 17, like, they don't have to live the disease anymore. So I just feel that they don't understand what a low blood sugar feels like, what a high blood sugar feels like, and, you know, what it feels to be 400 with ketones and, like, puking your guts out. I just don't think they understand that, and that's okay. That's, they're, they're only human, you know, we all make mistakes, and I can't blame them for not understanding something that they don't live with. Woo! That was, that was, woo. Okay, so now we're going off the question sheet. Woo! Ooh. So now we're going off the question sheet for um, a few things that I thought would be helpful for back to school because obviously we're getting to that point in time. I mean, Bob Cleekley and I are going back to school shopping in the, like two weeks. So we're getting it. We're, we're getting there. It's, it's, pr it's pretty close. You know, band camp starts in 11 days. So that means we're officially into back to school season. Okay, so um, a lot of times you're going to have a teacher who may not understand what's going on and that's okay. Just make sure that they know the basics, like, you know, what's a pump, what's a cell phone, what's a this, what's a that. It makes your life a lot easier because I had a teacher um, last year who actually did not understand it at all, like didn't bother to read my 504. And now I'm in deep crap because of it. So just make sure your teacher understands whether your mom has to talk to him, whether you have to talk to him, whether your dad does. You know, whoever has to do it, make sure it's done before you walk into that classroom. It'll save you a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. Um, make sure that, like, in your school bag you have stuff to treat a low and or high because if you are anything like me, I don't, I'm not required to go to the nurse for a lower or high blood sugar. Um, I can generally treat them in the classroom. So just make sure you have that stuff, you know, glucose tabs and all that fun stuff. Gotta keep that stuff with you. Woo! Um, also, I actually learned this from the day camp director, well, assistant director, that if you're taking a test, you should write your blood sugar at the top of the test and circle it. Because that way, when you get the test back and you see, like, oh, okay, my blood sugar was 344 and I got an F, well, then you can sh physically prove to the teacher that you just weren't together, obviously. If your blood sugar is 334 and you're taking a test, <laughs> forget it! You are done! Um, so, just make sure, because then, too, if you do fail a test and you're, you know, you're having a normal blood sugar, then it just means you're probably having an off day, which, believe me. I can tell you about off days if you really want me to. So, I hope that this was... I, I'm not even... Okay, I, I can never be done talking to you guys about diabetes. Ugh. And that embarrassment of pulling out your meter in class when everyone's like, oh, What are you doing? Trust me. I feel ya. I've known that feeling for the longest time. It wasn't as much as in, like, middle school and elementary school as it is now. Because especially where my school has the, the computers, um, so I get it. It's, like, wicked irritating and annoying. Like, my meter tells me that I need to check my blood sugar every, like, hour and a half, and it'll go off in class, and teachers will be like, oh, blah, blah, and I'm like, oh, no, it's not my phone. No, I promise. Which reminds me, going back to phones, I'm, okay, you guys know that I'm, like, not super big on, like, texting in school. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's okay. You don't have to know these things. I tell you. But, um, so what I do is I always leave my phone out on my desk. So, like, if I have my desk and you, so basically where you guys are sitting, like, that would be where my computer is. So I put my phone, like, over, like, on this side, like, next to the trackpad, if that makes sense. Like, the little, like, I have a Mac. So I'm, I'm trying to explain this without, like, sounding overly complicated. Um, so, you know, I put it, like, next to my trackpad and I say to my teacher, I'm like, alright, my phone's out. You're not gonna see me use it unless I need to text my mom or my dad. Or the nurse, because I, Aunt Luther is the nurse's son, so. Or the nurse. Um, if my meter or pump goes off, I'm really sorry, but that's just the diabetes, and I've got to take care of it. Most teachers are okay with this. Explain it like that. You know, be like, I'm sorry, my phone's going to be out. You won't see it used, unless. And if they're not going to be okay with that, maybe have your parents come in and, like, talk to them. Because, like, I know on some syllabuses, it's like, no cell phones allowed. You can have it written into your 504 if you're, like, if you think that you're going to need to contact your parents more often than not. I'm sure it can be written to the 504. It's no big deal. I do it. Like, I mean, most teachers at this point in time, like, you're a junior or senior in high school, um, they don't really care as long as you're being respectful about it and, like, your grades are okay. 
but I always just like to be honest with my teachers. So I just leave my phone out just so they know it's not getting used. Um, and I mean, I feel like it's easier to just check your blood sugar. See, now I am ranting. I feel like it's easier to just check your blood sugar um, and then text your parents and have your teacher see, like, because you guys have seen my meter. Hold on, let me go grab it. It's right here. La la la. Whoop. Okay. So you guys know that my meter has the USB port. So, you know, it can look really kind of weird when you're like trying to put this into your computer and download your blood sugar results. Um, so, you know, even if your teacher knows, like, oh yeah, this is my meter. Because I also had a teacher who tried to take my pump and meter this year because she thought that they were my cell phone. Cell phone's on the desk, woman. Calm down. You know, I don't recommend downloading your blood sugars during class, but sometimes it's easier for me, especially because, like, in my Spanish class, we would get these worksheets and we'd have, like, 40 minutes to do them and it would take me, like, 20. So I'd use the free time in class to download my blood sugars. It may look silly because, you know, your pump starts vibrating when it's in places and it's hiding because you're wearing a dress, but that's okay. Don't just... Basically, what I'm trying to get at is make sure your teachers know that you have diabetes and that you're going to be doing things. I need to stop talking with my meter in my hand. What is this? Um, and I mean, don't be like super freaked out if your teacher is sort of like on the stricter side. Because like I've had some teachers who are like okay with me just getting up and going to the bathroom. But like I had a teacher last year who would flip out. At, she, we had a pass, right? And so I take it. She's like, where are you going? The bathroom. Where else am I going to go? I need to give myself insulin. Oh, what? Mind blown. Didn't realize a diabetic needed to give themselves insulin. Oh, dear Lord, help me. Okay, so I think that's about all the talking I can do for right now. Sorry, guys. Um, so I hope you guys have a good rest of the summer and a great first week of school. I mean, I should be vlogging and stuff by then, but... If I'm not, oh, and also I want to show this to you guys. This is my new diabetes bracelet. I'm actually legitimately in love with it. I wear it constantly. My mom got it for me. You know, so yay. So seriously, I'll talk to you guys later. I promise. I'm trying to be more vigilant about posting videos, but it can get rather complicated sometimes. <laughs> Alright guys, seriously. Have a good day. Morning. Evening. Whenever you're watching this, have a good time. See you guys later. Bye.